Also, uh, Nolan, I guess Kevin Weeks uh, also reporting it was a fourth round pick. So there you go. Fourth round pick for Nemestikov. There it is. I'm fine with that deal. Yeah, that's true. Okay, let's do winners and losers, shall we, everyone? Let's do winners and losers. I think now, yeah, Kevin Weeks breaking that um, Nemestikov deal. All right. Let me know in the chat down below, everybody. Since we probably got most of the deals done. And we somewhat know what the cop deal is also looking like. I want to know in the chat for y'all, which teams do you guys think are the winners and the losers? Let me know in the chat. Winners and losers, what are we thinking? I'm thinking first things first, winner is absolutely the Florida Panthers, making themselves way better in almost every position with Claude Giroux, with Ben Sherrod. I was surprised, though, to see them not make another trade today with that LTAR space. Personally, I think that was an inevitability that just never uh, happened. But... I don't think overall, even without those other moves, I think adding Drew, adding DeBrusque, or not adding DeBrusque, adding a Sherratt to that defense come playoff time will definitely uh, be good for them. By the way, also confirming uh, Ryan Rashad, Jake DeBrusque remains a Bruin. No late trade coming. So there you go. DeBrusque will stay with Boston. But I'm going to say, first things first, Florida is a winner. Even though they might have overpaid for Ben Sherratt, I still think putting themselves in that position is important. I would say a winner as well for me personally might actually be Toronto, um, like a slight winner because I think the Giordano trade and, and, and acquiring Colin Blackwell is pretty huge for them. They still might lose in the first round, but I think it, it improves their chances way more. I feel like Giordano is going to be an amazing addition on that top four and they didn't really, they didn't really give up that much either. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty fine with it, honestly. Uh, one team that I think was a pretty good winner too, I, I need to go through some of these as well. Because there also could be some pretty big winners on the selling side of things. The Avs, I think, did pretty well. I, I wanted to see them get a middle six player. And obviously, our true lucky is exactly that. Plus, they get Cogliano, who I think will be solid on that fourth line, which I think will be pretty much, much perfect. One loser, though, that comes to mind for me uh, to start off is Nashville. To me, I think they had so much potential to make some big moves, yet... Their biggest move was trading Lazan for a second rounder, which in my opinion, I think Lazan can be something, but it's a big risk to make for a guy that hasn't really proven himself. And as, and, and as a 24-year-old, I think it's a big risk there. So I think Nashville, they could have gotten Ricard Raquel. They could have gotten some other middle six player. They could have added more onto that defense, I think. They added some depth guys, but I think overall, the Preds had a lot of potential with their cap space. They had like $50 million in deadline cap to work with. I think that would have been a, a, a couple of good additions. I mean, Phil Kessel, I thought would, would have been a really fun one to have. Have, um, on top of that. I mean, the Ducks, I think, do very well getting rid of Tampus Lenoma and now Ricard Raquel. Two deals that I think will definitely help them. I feel like for the Ducks, they see themselves as a team that could be there, but is still in the retooling phase. And I think that is definitely important because this Ducks team, I don't think, should rush things. They're a team that has a lot of good pieces, but aren't quite complete yet in building that. They get a lot of picks in the Tampus Lenoma deal. They get a lot of picks in the, in the uh, or hopefully a good pick in a prospect in the Ricard Raquel deal. I think the Ducks do pretty well there. Another winner to me personally is Calgary. Getting Tyler Toffoli as a big one is huge. You also get Cali Arncroft, who just scored his first goal with the Flames the other day. To me personally, that's a great addition. And Tyler Toffoli has been marvelous with the Flames so far, which I kind of expected. But at the same time, having him there and having him before the deadline, I think is huge for them. I think the Flames forward-wise definitely improve themselves and I think set themselves up, sells up a lot better for the first round. One team that I think didn't do as much as I thought they could have was the LA Kings. They're in a situation where they can't afford to just not do much and and still look long term with things but at the same time i feel like the kings just like the ducks had a lot of cap for had a decent amount of cap space had an, enough guys to work with i feel like they could have done some more especially again ricard raquel could have been another addition but obviously in the same division it, it complicates things um but i think honestly for the la kings they had a real potential to make themselves even more of a contender yet they went more for depth like troy stetcher and and although that's fine i think it definitely doesn't move the needle too much for them one interesting team i don't even know if they're a winner or a loser right now is van Vancouver, they're a team that really, they only traded Tyler Mott and we didn't see a trade for Besser. We didn't see a trade for, uh, we didn't see a trade for Garland. We didn't see a trade for Shen. We didn't see a trade for Halak. None of those guys actually got dealt, which is an interesting one for me with the Canucks. I don't really think they're going to make the playoffs, but this was a, this was obviously with the selling and the amount of picks that teams were able to get back to me. If you trade a guy like Besser, if you trade a guy like Garland, you could have gotten some ma maximum value, at least on the surface level uh, and on the outside looking in. So for me, Vancouver maybe missed some opportunities here, only selling Tyler Mott, but it's interesting. They keep most of the guys, they keep most of the guys in the, on the locker room and uh, they could still trade Garland and Besser in the off season. That's still a possibility. One team that I think is definitely, although it's not, even really their fault is maybe Vegas as a potential loser. They're a team that was 
in on Ricard Raquel, didn't end up training for him. But their team is in a world of pain right now. They didn't even trade for a goaltender to to fix some of the Band-Aid issues with Ryan, with uh, Robin Leonard being out long term. There was nothing there. Obviously, the cap space is, is a huge issue for them. And with the injuries they had, it was definitely bad circumstances. But at the same time, I think they still could have done more and could have been a stronger team, at least adding a goal center, I think would have been, would have been perfect. Uh, for me, a team that kind of missed some potential, but also got some back was the Boston Bruins. We were talking about them getting a middle six player and potentially getting a Carver Keller and Andrew Kopp specifically. They get none of those guys, but they do add a top four defense and Hampus Lundholm. So in some ways, I think they win. In some ways, I think they lose. I don't think they're going to get past a team like Tampa or Florida in the playoffs, just to get their rosters as a whole. But I feel like for Boston, they're a, they're an interesting team. I, I I don't think I don't think Lindholm puts them over the edge as a Stanley Cup winning team, but I do think it gives them a lot better of a chance. Uh, personally, for me, Montreal's also another weird one where in some ways they won, in some ways they lost. If they went full blown sell, I think we could have still seen a Mike Coppin trade, a Jake Allen trade, a a another trade on top of that. There was a lot of options for the Habs to potentially get rid of, but they do get rid of really the big guys we were looking for the Habs to trade: Archery Lekkinen, Ben Sherratt, Tyler Toffoli. So all in all. All with the package that the Habs got back, I think it's honestly pretty good for them. I, I think I would say their their overall trade deadline was a win uh, with how much they were able to get back. And we were expecting big things. But now with the Montreal Canadiens, their pick situation looks fantastic. They got two picks in both this year and next. They got th three third-round picks this year. They got three fourth-round picks this year. Maybe not as much as we could have expected, but still overall a good haul for the Habs. And especially this season, they're going to have a lot of picks to work with. So I'm pretty excited about that. Let me just make sure there's also no other trades here. Oh!